Welcome to the Nerd Stalker Podcast. I am here with my friend Greg, and I am Adolfo Ferranda, and I was finally smart enough to put my uh, Twitter handle up here, uh, at Nerd Stalker. Uh, we're here to talk about all really cool things tech, and uh, for the, I don't know, for the week since last week when we talked, and uh, Greg, how you doing, man? Oh, good, man. Um, it's fun last week, and I'm going to have some fun today. We have some pretty good topics lined up. I, I was looking at your list there, and we're going to have some fun with that today. Yeah. So it's yeah. nice. Big, big news, and we might as well just roll right out with it. As everyone probably okay. in the world knows at this point, it's been a ton of media coverage on it. Steve Jobs <laughs> resigns as CEO of Apple. How about that? Uh, yeah, that – you know, it, it, even uh, – his successor has been really in that spot for about six months now. So, you know, I think it was just coming to that point, his failing health, um, you know, a lot of stories about that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think either way, there's a certain amount of sadness, even though if you were expecting that uh, day to come, it was uh, a shock to a lot of people because, you know, he's the one that really brought the company back from, mm. you know, near bankruptcy. Right, right. right. And, uh, From Guillemilio, uh destruction, oh, former CEO yes, of Apple. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I think you know, and, and it, it's such a great story, right? Because he exited, he left the company, then came back, yeah, and, and you know, had a little bit of a hiatus at Pixar, which was successful too. Yeah. And I think you know, reading about you know some of the things that I thought about when he. You know, now that he's exited or at least you know, not taking a direct role in the company now is, you know, how they were able to kind of change the vision of Apple. You know, they changed the name actually from Apple Computer to Apple because right. I think he really believed that they didn't want to be just known as a computer company anymore. Right. So, what was it? What did he say? Uh, like in a couple, I, I don't know. I can't remember if it was the last keynote or the keynote before that. He said Apple is now a mobile computing company. I mean, straight up. Yes. Yes, I mean, he was very, very adamant about that, and, and, and because of all the devices they're throwing out there now. And I think that, you know, they're a great company in terms of a big company that was able to adapt. Yeah. Um, where you look at things like IBM, Motorola, they haven't been really Microsoft. able to adapt that well. Microsoft, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I read a really interesting uh, article that John Dvorak actually wrote on uh, Market Watch. Uh, he had a theory, you know, it's just another theory, and he said mm. so that it was just a theory that actually this, what could have happened, a possible scenario, was that Jobs resigned because of uh, the threat of possibly losing Tim Cook. Now, it's really plausible, right? You know, that I'm sure every company in the world was probably looking at this guy saying he's effectively been running Apple for a long time, despite jobs being CEO, you know, because of these different leaves, um, mm -hmm. you know, cook was running the company quite successfully and he's been there for over yeah. a decade too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, a long time. So he's a seasoned executive and he knows, and supposedly logistically he's, he's a pretty amazing, um, amazing guy at, at doing that type of thing. So the you know he the theory was that if Jobs stays on as CEO, you know this mm. guy is getting kind of anxious, right, to to sort of take yeah. take the helm of a company. You know whether he would have left Apple or not is is whatever up for speculation, and that's what we do. But um, <laughs> you know that that was a really interesting perspective. I'm I was thinking about it, I'm like wow you got you're on to something there possibly right, and so the board rather than you know take a chance of losing this guy's you know and and Jobs too probably know it being the genius that he is politically now after all this mm. all those past things you know is that yeah, we, sure. we need to keep this guy and i'm sure other things came into play mm. like his health but we got to remember that steve jobs is still acting chair well he i supposedly he's chairman of the board now right yes he is still chairman of the board i think you know i i that's an interesting take on something because you know there, there's there's always the second guy the b side i call of of, of, the, of, of the record that yeah. is always really running the company. And I think the, the downside for Tim really was is that he's not charismatic mm -hmm. uh, leader yeah. like Jobs is. And I think most people um, looking at a lot of leadership uh, studies, uh, papers, 
you know, a lot of people are drawn to charismatic leaders because it's just, you know, especially if you're doing well, right? Yeah, sure. um, why not, right? And um, and he's a, you know, marketing genius on top of that. So, you know, uh, will you see Tim uh, do the whole stage pro- promo mm-hmm. at, at, at Macworld anymore? Probably not. You'd probably share the uh, stage with several of the other uh, yeah, they've, executives. They've done that the know? past couple times. I've noticed that they've been bringing out, um, what, Jeff Forstall, I believe his name is. And, yes, and, uh, yes, the yes. The marketing guy and, the, and all yes. the other people sort of just to, and, and I, could, I knew kind of what was coming, that this was sort of possibly a, a, a take on things to come. Uh, right. but that is one thing that we need to remember also is that Apple has an incredible um, team of people, all their employees, yes. you know, I mean, they, they pull the top tier of talent, let's face it, in the Valley here, and actually probably yeah. from all over the yeah. world. Um, so it hasn't all been Steve Jobs. Oh, no, no. And in fact, it's funny, I was reading, you know, some of the things that, you know, he's done as interim CEO, even though, you know, a lot of this probably was in place while Steve was you know, actively running things or, or as the CEO, or, you know, he, he's increased their cash. Um, but that's probably because of the, just the success of the products yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, completely, you know, um, they're the most valuable public couple in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. That's not a small feat. Yeah. Uh, they introduced a new iPad, which just basically ran, you know, competitors like, you know, Hewlett Packard to the Hills. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they added more retail locations. I mean, that's yeah. one thing that Steve Jobs always felt that retailers would never give um, Apple the front and center attention that an Apple store would. So he just took that Apple store concept and brought it to China, which, you know, you, you know how it is, how tough it is in China. Yeah. I mean, to yeah. open a retail They're store. They're copying like, there. It's so hot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. You saw those articles too, right? Yeah. I, I think it was two, three weeks ago. There was like two or three articles that were just talking about these these uh, copycat Apple stores. Yeah, so. yeah, amazing. No, but I think that's a that's a very good point. Is that so many of these other hardware manufacturers, you know, they they are at such a disadvantage because you know you could make a beautiful, amazing product, and then put it into someone else's store, a Best Buy or somewhere else, a Radio Shack, who knows, and just it could be behind another product or something to, like that, right? And you just have this horrible experience. You can't find it or it's just not sold well. And then you're just hosed, right? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, a lot of that, you know, dealing with them on the marketing side, you know, you're also paying for a lot of that, right? I mean, you, you know, if you decide to put, you know, a $1 million campaign in the Radio Shack saying, oh, we want to promote this for the month of September, you know, of course, Radio Shack's going to say, sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. How do you want to do that? You know, how do you want to do that, Verizon? You yeah. Know? yeah. So I, I agree with you. I think it's a numbers game. And, and, and maybe that's why Apple's really profitable is that, you know, they don't play that game traditionally like everyone else does. You know, they yeah. change the game. And I, and I think that that's the other thing that people talk about Steve Jobs is that he's not he's not willing to take status quo as, as the gospel. He's willing to try to change things, as, as we said earlier in the in the podcast that yeah. you know adaptability was the main thing that i think he's brought to the game at, at apple yeah incredible like you said i mean uh the macintosh uh next operating system ceo pixar you know ceo i believe um mm. come back to apple um the iphone the ipod the tablet you know the imax uh jeez yeah. we could go on on h.264 yeah. uh quick time <laughs> right uh Gosh, what else? Oh, no, 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 now he's no. on the board of Disney, I, I, right? He's on the freaking board of Disney, or he's a major stockholder uh, there too. And now he's chairman, and he's now he's going to make a spaceship, right, in uh, Silicon Valley, yeah. <laughs> Apple headquarters. Oh. He's going to a billion dollars. But anyways, oh. we should move on. So okay. uh, we'll see how the story Sounds progresses. Good. You know, Steve is still, you know, he's still chairman. So we'll see how that that story progresses, and we'll let you know how that goes. So mm, let's see. Uh, what what's the next story here, Greg? Group on. Yeah, let's let's talk about Groupon a little bit. You know, they they've talked, they've really kind of in the last few months talked about their IPO, or at least for a little while. Um, now the market's tanking, um, you know, and there a lot of a lot of IPOs are really kind of on 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 the brink of whether they want to just do this or not in this type of market. But I think Groupon has some other issues that we probably need to talk about. That um, yeah, they got a lot of negative really... press lately, you know, and uh, oh. man, they really got they really got hit and. Whether it's warranted or not, I, I, it's up to you, the viewers and the listeners. 
but uh yeah I, I don't know it sounded pretty shady you know from a lot of the things that i've read you know yeah the, and some it's an incredibly reporting. expensive business to run i mean you're you're hiring salespeople, right that are on the ground or you know they're working at commission probably and so they really have to hustle their sales people right yeah so it's such a different model than you know what i would call the living social model um you know they they take cuts from their customers as well as um, their, you know, the the, the, the merchant, the, the merchant. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people have been kind of questioning that type of model, um, you know, uh, you know, and it's it, when you look at the living social model, um, you know, they, it, the name in itself really kind of um, kind of makes it feel like, oh, it's shareable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they take their cut on a performance basis. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's a little bit different. Um, you know, they use email a little bit better than Groupon does. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know. You know. I was getting Groupon for a while, and I just I couldn't deal with all the email, so I actually opted out. And, you know, there's still a lot yeah. of people that use it. I meet people every day that I, say, I got a Groupon this and that, and I'm like, wow, you're really a Groupon addict. And they're like, yeah, you know, I, I am. But it seems like everyone's getting to the game now. I have to admit that lately I've bought a couple Amazon deals, local deals or something oh, like yeah, that yeah, that have been coming yeah. up that have a particular interest. I know Thrillist is doing that. It seems like everyone – I think Google is into the game now. Um, but, but yeah, as you mentioned, there's a one story in particular. I think it was a coffee shop owner in, in uh, Oregon, uh, Portland, I believe. Mm. Yeah. And uh, she ended up being something like, I don't know, thousands in the hole from you know doing the deal with Groupon. Even though you know she was told by some other merchants don't do it, but then she saw another merchant down the street who it looked like had some success, and um, it was something about like the volume, the amount of volume, and how 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 much she had to discount it or, or something like that, and the rep that she worked with apparently. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of competition in that space, and and I don't know if Groupons handle it in the best way, and they IPO'd or something like that, or they're about to, right? I don't know. Yeah, they they're they're wanting to. I think the, okay. the, 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 the the problem is is that like I said in this this, this economy that, that has put that into question as well as um just you know some of this negative press they got, uh, as well as, you know, the profitability model. You know, a lot of people just question can they stay profitable mm -hmm. with this uh, type of model right. um you know uh where you know they're taking cuts on both sides of the fence mm -hmm. and you know you know, well, can they really make it effective? I think, you know, I, and it speaks to really, you know, the reason why you and I as consumers use coupons, because, you know, we're looking for daily deals where if you're looking at it from a small business standpoint, yeah, you'd like to offer those deals. But the reason really why you offer those deals in the past through paper is for loyalty. You know, you want them, you want to bring them in, give them a great experience and say, hey, we, I have now a customer forever now. But I think in the game we have these days with with all our devices and, and that have the ability to choose and select and the many choices mm -hmm. we have to choose and select, especially if you're in a city like San Francisco, mm -hmm. I'm not sure loyalty plays a, a big role anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I have to admit even uh, I'm in stores, electronic stores all the time or, or you know, shopping mm -hmm. for something and I get my scanner on my phone and I'm doing price comparisons right there. Most of the times I end up at Amazon, but, um, yeah, you know, yeah. so I'm in the store, I'm looking at the thing, you know, and I feel kind of weird about it. Right. And I'm like, Oh, this is, yep. This is the one I want is compared to thing B over here. Yep. And, uh, I'll do my price comparison thing. And I'm like, well, it's cheapest at Amazon. And I buy it from Amazon. Thanks store. I was at for letting me compare stuff, but I'm out of here and I'm going to buy it somewhere else. You know, <laughs> what a tough, oh, yeah. what a tough thing. And I and I think that spells this this thing for you know I mean that's where technology is changing the game. I mean you think of it from even the book standpoint, right? Where yeah, bookstores oh are pretty much yeah. gone, right? Yeah. Right. I mean you know they try to introduce coffee shots with bookstores just yeah. to make sure that you have a little comfortable experience, right. but that still didn't work, right? right. But it's the technology that's changing. I mean you just had a great example of actually bringing your iPod or iPad to actually a store that you could connect in, in either wireless or 3G and actually do the physical comparison and you've spent a lot less minutes to try to think, you know, 
figure it all out in, in, in right. an hour or so like that. You said, oh, okay, here's the best deal. Yeah. Heck, you know, I want to save a buck just like everyone else, so I'm just going to go uh, where the best deal is, and thanks for letting me at least see what it looks like in person. Yeah, you know? well, whatever happened to customer loyalty? I'm, I'm a bad customer. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, retailers out there. No, I, I try to go to my same coffee shop all the time, so I'll give them that. Uh, all right, yeah. so next story here, Greg. Mozilla introduces a web API of uh, a phone experience. So this is really interesting. You know, um, they've quietly been working on this this rumored. You know, people were calling it a mobile operating or system and this and that. Mm. But it turns out um, they're just creating a so open sourced APIs to work on um, via HTML5 work on any operating system. So now that you know, we hear things about like a. Google purchasing Motorola and other hardware manufacturers, as we spoke about last week, being nervous about, you know, it, well, quietly behind the scenes, being nervous about this this purchase and what it means to them. Um, mm. Perhaps this could be, or this type of solution could be beneficial for them, especially if they end up rolling out their own operating systems. And it, th that's been rumored for a while, right? I mean, that they really kind of maybe eventually want to. Uh, I don't know. I've yeah, heard people were saying it would never do. happen. You know, people, well, a lot of pundits out there were saying, no way, this, you know, they, all these hardware manufacturers would never, would never do that. Android is free. It's open. Why would they do that? And and then, you know, uh-oh, <laughs> Google buys Motorola. Now they're your competitor, you know? Now, now, tell me, you know, from your standpoint, um, you, you deal a lot of this area as well. Um, you know, do they need a Apple and Google to implement their API to really be successful, or can they really, hmm. you know, I, I don't know. There, there were some things I was reading about this where, you know, they really need an Apple or Google to implement it, but Apple's already said that they want to be married to HTML, you know, apps, and then Google yeah, this isn't is, going to go away with that. This is really interesting because the, I think the, the dark horse um, beneficiary in all this is actually Microsoft. Because um, they don't have a strong app store or, you, you know, uh, especially natively, no one's writing uh, C Sharp. Well, the majority of mobile developers are not writing C Sharp or Silverlight applications or whatever. They're writing yeah. native iPhone, Objective-C type of mobile applications, or they're, you know, going the Java route and creating Android native applications. The vast majority, mm -hmm. I guess the majority are making iOS. Um, I suspect when we'll see at the build conference when I'm there next month, um, okay. that that Microsoft will probably, you know, has been pushing HTML5, and if everyone does move to HTML5, and Apple was talking about HTML5, yet they have this sort of, you know, native Objective C uh, uh, mobile application uh, development process, then all of a sudden it's it's wide open to everyone, you know, because all these. These yeah. mobile applications are just web applications now, you know. So exactly, supposedly the better experience at this point in time is the the native experience, right? But as mm -hmm. HTML5 is more accepted, improves, and iterates, uh, I think things are going to change. And in, in the mobile space, things are changing at an incredibly fast clip. So, <laughs> you know, I don't think it will be you know a longer time rather than a shorter time that this this type of thing occurs. Yeah, and I haven't really been able to test. Well, there isn't really many HTML5 type applications out there I could really test. But uh, you know, one of the issues I'm really having right now is, and I think we 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 talk about this a lot offline, especially when we're talking about this podcast and our broadcast, mm -hmm. is is uh, system resources, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the ability to cut down as much as you can of the mm -hmm. system resources to give you give yourself the best experience, and that's probably driven by you know, the less, uh, you know, um, powerful or, you know, um, uh, I would call iPads and other, you know, I would call, you know, netbooks or what do you want to call those, mm -hmm. uh, to try, try to, you know, you know engage those. And I, maybe I, I think that's where the HTML5 is really going to kind of show its yeah. really power. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. Well, moving on to the next story, it's kind of a follow-up story yeah. from last week. It's Missouri teachers win an injunction against anti-social networking bill. Oh, I like that. You know, I, I think now that they got the uh, ACLU involved out there and, 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 
and trying to question this, this, you know, wh what are you really trying to control with this bill? I, I think they brought up a lot of good points. And so the injunction really says, you know, we're stopping that. But, you know, even the governor who, who readily signed um, uh, that bill into law is even backtracking now and saying that, hey, you know, uh, we need to repeal some of those concerns you have. But isn't it kind of funny? Have you heard this thing about Missouri? They're the show me state. And I thought that was really kind of a <laughs> I, irony about this story that it came out of Missouri of yeah. all places. Yeah, but amazing. anyway, that's <laughs> what's your take on some of this stuff? I mean, this let's, follow up. I mean, let's read this. So uh, let's see. Uh, it's the Missouri State Teachers Association, along with the ACL. Mm -hmm. You has sued the state over the legislation, the latter charging mm -hmm. that the law violated the First Amendment. Judge Beatman's injunction will be in place for 180 days or until the state legislator and the teachers can resolve their dispute. Uh, earlier this week, as you mentioned, yeah, Rep Republican State Senator Jane Cunningham indicated that she was willing to clarify some of the bill's language that dealt with social networking. And Missouri's Governor Jay Nixon, who did sign the law into effect, now says that he'll ask lawmakers to repeal the restrictions. Hooray. You know, I, you know, it's interesting. You, you, I think people don't really realize how powerful um, the teacher unions in each state are. Actually, mm -hmm. um, they bring in all. I, I know in California, you know, you, you and I live here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're extremely uh, influential and powerful, and I, I don't think it's much different than any other state. I mean, it's it, you know, education is important, everyone, and um, and uh, you know, I think you know a lot of things run around. Our educational system, even though we don't like how it's run at a lot of times, it still does. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, teachers have a lot to say how they want. In fact, I think I read this week as well after I saw that that article um, that, you know, there's, there's a lot of studies out there that they feel um, social um, networks help the relationships between students mm -hmm. and teachers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in terms of engagement, in terms of being on yeah. kind of like the same level, especially if you're on Facebook, it's kind of cool to have your teacher on Facebook. Right. And, it's just another you know, tool. You know, it's just another tool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so moving and, on to the next story. Let's uh, move on to uh, Google launches Amazon, Amazon, excuse me, River Street View. This is a really cool story. Um, Google's doing some very cool stuff, and I'm glad they haven't cut this one yet. And as you know, as many other things they seem to be cutting project-wise. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, uh, so yeah, Larry's, Larry's doing a great job. Google has adapted its Street View service to map one of the world's most remote places, the Amazon and the Rio Negro rivers in northwest Brazil. The project is in partnership with the Foundation for a Sustainable Amazon. Google will train local people to collect images and leave behind equipment so work continues long term. Pictures will be stitched together so users can explore 360 degree panoramics of the area. How cool is that? Oh, man. Well, you, you think about, you know, this whole environmental thing and, and you know, the, the forests in, in, in South America and everything. That's really where we see kind of the last frontier, right? I mean, we're building out all these coastal areas, especially in China and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's the interlands that we really, you know, have and I try to hold as sacred. And so I think this is just part of giving everyone the experience of saying, you know, there's this fresh virgin land that we have to keep, you know, prime and virgin still. Yeah. You know, and, yes. I, and I think it's a great way of doing that. Yeah. As, as, uh, told you earlier before the before the recording uh the other week i was in san diego and i had the honor of going to the scripps uh marine biology center there and speaking with some of the professors there and one of them shared with me that they've been doing uh, they're about two years into it using some of this facial recognition technology along with satellite imagery to um to check on coral reefs so they can identify you know coral reefs within uh and, and its growth and also their destruction as well. But not only that, they can also identify baby coral and um, see how they're also progressing or not too. I mean, I love this kind of stuff, oh. you know. Uh, September 7th, SF New Tech, uh, bring on the APIs with Viadio. I still don't know how to say that for the second week in a row. Clout, <laughs> three scale, Gigya, context.io, Salesforce, Simply Hired and more. So make sure you're there September 7th uh, at Mighty in San Francisco. 
You can uh, get more information at sfnewtech.com. That's S F N E W T E C H dot com. <laughs> Don't try to spell <laughs> off the top of your head when you're when you're doing a live show or almost live show. Uh, yeah, so make sure to be there. They they actually yeah they live stream this thing on SF New Tech forward slash live, and Greg is uh, sort of DJ mix master Greg on that show. So um, you know <laughs> you guys you. should go into the chat room like me and diss all his picks like great pig. Greg and how did you transition to that? That was just awful. What, you, yeah. what were you thinking? Yeah, just yeah, just this just interact with me on social media. I monitor while I'm broadcasting, so I get some interesting comments. Uh, yeah. You know, especially uh, certain things that Miles may say on stage. Sometimes yeah. it's pretty hilarious, yeah. actually. Or Matt, jeez, jeez, censor Matt, you guys. Make sure cover yeah. your eyes and yeah. plug your ears when Matt's speaking. No, I'm yeah. sorry. I think I need to put that on a 30 second delay when Matt comes on right. so I can have a chance to edit on his whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So I also want to mention uh, the Failcon conference, which is in October 24th mm. of this year at the Kapuki Hotel in San Francisco. Ooh. Our friend Cass Phillips puts that on. Um, I'm about to release also a podcast. Uh, you probably see it on nerdstalker.com uh, with an interview with Cass about this. Uh, some of the speakers will nice. be, um, let's see, John Devney of Moment. Uh, Catherine Barr of More David Dow Ventures, Evan Hamilton of User Voice, Salon Crawford of DAT, uh, a lot of really great, great topics. Uh, Joe Gebbia Airbnb, from Airbnb. There's going to be some really great, um, you know, sessions and and topics as, as you see. So check it out at thefailcon.com and uh, make sure to check it out. Again, that's October 24th at the Hotel Kabuki in San Francisco. So, Greg, wow. wrapping up the show yes, here, sir. where can we contact you, my friend? Well, you see my uh, handle up there, Social Greg. That's my Twitter handle. And uh, feel free to DM me or uh, obviously after I follow you back. I usually follow everyone back, actually. Uh, people are actually surprised by that. Um, but I do it manually. Um, I actually read your profiles. Wow. And um, obviously the people that I follow, um, I'm pretty well in tune with in general. And uh, – if you're lucky one to make it onto my list, I'll follow what you write. So uh, feel free to contact me that way and uh, email me at socialgregsf at gmail.com. Uh, that's another way you can get a hold of me and at greg at btrax.com, my company. So. Awesome, Greg. And so, I am uh, Adolfo Ferrando. You can find me on Twitter at, at NerdStalker. Look up here. Sorry, uh, podcast listeners, if you can't look up there, it's at NerdStalker. And uh, – yeah, you can reach me at Adolfo at NerdStalker if you want to get together and we can talk or have a drink. And uh, make sure you can see me and Greg at SF New Tech, as he mentioned. And uh, anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching the podcast, guys. See you, hey, next, see week, you next week, Adolfo. All right. All right. Take care. All right. Okay. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Nerd. <laughs> three. <laughs> Hang on. Three, two, one.